Here's the story of a person living beside the Myra Quarry, located just outside of Fredericton, on the railroad. In 2014, the quarry was given speedy approval to do business in a protected area for environment over the third largest aquifer in Canada and to disturb the quality of life for many people living along the railroad. The whole process violated all kinds of rules and there's been no transparency and no accountability as to how that happened in the first place. Over the past six years, that quarry has been protected and no one can figure out why. But the people who live there have not been protected by the Department of Health, Department of Environment, Department of Natural Resources, or any other political means to try to get some sense of justice, some sense of accountability, some change. So here's their story, first person, like a victim impact statement. It would be really nice if you could feel what they feel and imagine what it's like to live there and to know that this could happen in your backyard just as easily. Like, do you have the authority to bring all the people together that are involved in, in something not working well and saying, we got to settle this? And it becomes a, an example of a, a different way of resolving conflict? Or is it you have to write a report, you pass it on, and it, you don't know? So almost the answer to almost any question which begins, do you have the authority, is almost always no. But <laughs> um, what we do have experience in is, is a form of mediation. What we observe sometimes is that uh, governments and the citizens are talking past each other. Hmm. And the government is responding in a kind of a safe boilerplate way because the people who are, who are mouthing those responses aren't the ones making the decision. So they have to be very careful about the words they use. Hmm. And on the other side, the disconnect is enormous because the people on the other, other side are aware that they're not in a real conversation. Yes. I'm not actually being listened to. Yep. I say what I say, and then you say whatever's on your piece of paper. That's not a conversation, right? Yes, yes. Uh, so what we have been able to do in some cases is to translate and to take the argument of the citizen and to say, okay, from the perspective of government, this may be an argument that works. And in the same way to talk to the government and say, the goal of your program was this, but the outcome is perverse. So should you not change the engineering of your program to clo get closer to your goal. That's where we have had some success. And some, some of that takes place at small tables. A lot of it is kind of go between diplomacy almost, a kind of mediation. So that, that does occur. Um, it's, it's tougher when you're trying to shift larger hmm. paradigms. Again, because of the kind of intransigence I've talked about in this notion, well, if we did it for these people, we'd have to do it for everyone. And, we and, and by implication, that means a bad. Right. right. <laughs> Rather than that means good. Yes, right. So, the, so, <laughs> so, so I, take different, I take different approaches in the work towards that. Sometimes I say, yes, that's correct. <laughs> it, this would be better. So, yes, you should do it for everyone. Sometimes I say to them, why don't you try this as a pilot project? Hmm. Why don't you try it this way? And we'll agree now what we're going to measure in a couple of years and see how, see how it works, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I say, do you know what? I can agree that this is an outlier case, which really doesn't change the overall rule. It's an example of how you've made a broad rule which does not work for these specific people. Let's say it's not a precedent. Let's say this is just what you're going to do in this case. Because mm -hmm. you and I understand that if you start by saying, you know, these are the three absolute rules... If you're going to move towards something called fairness, you're going to have to start making exceptions. You're going to have to start making nuance, right? Yeah. Otherwise, the book the book of laws would be, you know, three pages long, and it's yeah. not, right? Yeah, that's that difference between laws and principles. Right. Because you can have guiding principles, which can encompass a range of actions. But if you've got strict and rigid rules, um, you're going to struggle forever because it's society you're working with. It's not the same as... Um, the rules for playing basketball or football. Right. Um, I would like to turn the conversation a little bit um, and see where it goes, but it ties to what you just said about um, you're at a meeting and the public is saying what with passion and they need to be heard and the response is, you know, I'm going to stick to my script and do my letter. So that's not a conversation. So I want to play a bit with a specific example, which would be the Myra Quarry. Mm -hmm. um, 
uh, which some people around Fredericton area would know about, which other parts of the province wouldn't. But what I'm interested in is the process more than particulars, because there's going to be conversation on CIS and mine. Um, recently, Research Productivity Council put out this lovely map with all this mining potential in New Brunswick. And I want to take a map of all the rivers in New Brunswick and put that over top and say, you better be careful how you proceed with your decision making process. So it's never about the particulars. It's always about the process for how things come together. And uh, I'm aware that some of the community up there has had several conversations with you, expecting certain results, um, maybe not quite understanding what you can or can't do. And my question about authority, do you have authority? You know, maybe you don't, but you can push for better processes. Um, it's now been six years for them. Um, I've interviewed a, a couple of people recently on the personal impact for them. So their houses uh, devalued by, you know, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. Sure. Um, can't grow gardens, quality of life is, is horrid. Mm -hmm. The biggest injustice to the whole thing is the lack of communication, mm -hmm. uh, how the decision was made in the first place. No answers. Right. Um, can you help us through that? Sure. Well, one point I would make is that the, if you want to speak specifically on a quarry issue, uh, that's an example. There are a number of them through the province. Uh, there was one um, in the Sackville area that made the news a while ago, but I'm familiar with a number of others that I, I won't name because yeah. because of confidentiality. But it's it's an it's an ongoing it's an ongoing issue. So there's a lot of elements to this, but the the ones one that I would would generally point to is is this: we have a base decision, which is we're going to need this rock or this aggregate or this gravel or whatever it is that we're looking for for some form of construction, road building, 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 something, right. Yeah. You know, so we then say, okay, we're going to, we're, we're going to source this, we're going to source this and we want to source it close because that cuts down our costs. So there's all these are drivers of the process and there's employment and an income stream and royalties and taxes that are all associated with those interests. In other mm -hmm. words, there's a strong economic interest which is held in a very small number of hands who have a very acute interest in that project going ahead. So their desire to lobby government, their ability to hire lawyers, all mm. these things are, are much, are very high. Is that, so there's a justification that way. You've just rhymed off four or five things on justification. Um, there's an access that some have that others might not have. Right. Uh, so there's that. So <clears throat> how do we make that transparent? Right. Right. So on the other side is the is a, is a more community interest, which is dispersed, and where people may not be aware at first of what occurred, and they may not be have the kind of resources where they say, well, we'll we'll hire a lawyer, we'll fight this in court, these sort of things. They're they're going to receive reassurances at the front end, and only maybe eventually realize that those reassurances aren't are, are, aren't aren't working, yeah. and and at which point they're going to be told, well, the decision's already been made. Yeah, we can't go back now. Because the decision's already been made, they've already invested in the in the in the yep. infrastructure and so on. So now you're 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 reacting. Right. And and the thing is like a rolling boulder. Try to stop it now, right? Yep. Because it's 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 almost impossible at that point because again, the income is flowing, all these things, and government which has perhaps skipped some of the earlier steps is not going to admit that it's not going to and why is that it doesn't that sit in your chair like right it's see it, because it sees it sees risks and liabilities because it may be embarrassed that you know some of the steps weren't taken because there may be a general flaw in the process mm -hmm. because in a number of cases governments have quite deliberately kicked these decisions to smaller groups like a local planning council, mm -hmm. so that it can say, well, it was the planning council that decided that. We can mm -hmm. wash our hands of that. The planning council approved it. Yeah. That's, we're, we're done here. To intercept just a second, in the Myra case, uh, the chair of the local service district, was none of them were ever informed. Mm -hmm. Right. For, for the Myra, like, it was right. a complete surprise to all of them. Yeah. And so, yet they had, technically, they had responsibility for that P, that area. Right. So, so the, you can talk about an entirely <laughs> different way of looking at this, and... And over, over time, you say to yourself, well, is this, our office is in the business of saying, is this an administrative error? Okay. Right? It may not be an administrative error in the sense that the process may have been followed correctly according to the letter of the law. Hmm. That doesn't make it just, and it doesn't make it fair. 
but you say to yourself, okay, let's talk about a different model. Okay. Let's talk about one in which the local community actually has the ability to have full knowledge of this. And then you make your, make your workarounds hmm. as you need to make them. So in the case of, of, of the, the Meyer, without giving away, I think anything that's confidential, there's specific concern about trucks on specific roads at specific speeds at specific volumes all these sort of things right mm. there's been a question of blasting how much when how strong mm. these are all things in which you can have regulations in which you can set guidelines but those all depend on you actually enforcing those regulations yeah, you have to enforce it i mean the one that, that comes up the most in doing the research and and the three key protesters were sitting in here and mm -hmm. um that show went an hour and a half cause, right and i let it because they needed to get the story out and it's part of a bigger narrative about decision making process but they'll refer to dust mm -hmm. which is the single biggest thing but it's not dust because when you say dust to the general public yeah they'll think dust in your house yeah, yes, no yeah. it's silica dust right it's toxic right it's particular <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's really really dangerous mm -hmm. And they can't get any response. Like to them, you know, there's the environmental issue. They recognize jobs. They recognize potential for, but it's cost them, you know, cumulatively, it's cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars. And there's nobody offering compensation. There, there's nothing. Um, so if the Sis and Mine project starts to surface, uh, you're going to be busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, take your pick on the other ones coming because that intersection between community, um, Indigenous peoples, um, a narrow or small group of people having access and authority and, and clout. And once the boulder starts rolling, you can't stop it. Mm -hmm. um, but the consequence of all that is it's that fear-based economy again, and there's no trust. Right. So if this isn't based mind thing and you say we're going to be busy, in one sense I say I hope so. In another sense I say I hope not. Because yes. if I I think from the mouths of those people in involved in the Myra thing. I don't want to put any words in their mouths, but I think they would be quite explicit about this. They don't feel like our office helped them. Hmm. They feel like, in fact, our office let them down. Yes. And I don't disagree with their analysis of that. Hmm. Now, I could try to address their expectations of that in terms of what they thought was occurring, right? But what happens oftentimes when people come to our office is government's not listening to them. Yeah. We do listen. Yep. The mistake, despite our <laughs> continual uh, attempt to clarify that people make, is because we're listening and taking notes and, and repeating back their arguments to them, is that they're making progress. They may not be making progress. They yep. may be convincing us, yep. but we're not the decision maker. That was a question I asked earlier about authority, because mm -hmm. it gives you that space that you, you don't really have the authority. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we often say, and I mean, this this, this may seem like very weak sauce to people who come into the offices, we say to them, what we do may not help you at all. It may only help the person in your situation five or 10 years from now, because that's the point at which oftentimes government will change processes going forward, but they won't reverse hmm. because they see, well, the cost of reversing that decision is too high. Mm -hmm.